One way that victims are being rescued during Hurricane Harvey is by military equipment. And these rescues are coming the same week the White House reversed an order from the Obama administration that banned the military from giving surplus gear to police forces. Rachel, I begin with you. Is this an obvious example, as we're seeing it in Houston right now and other areas near Houston, of the local police forces better performing, better protecting their citizens because they have the help of government resources? Absolutely. We're seeing these images and it's very clear that this equipment is helping the police uh, save lives. And uh, listen, I don't buy the narrative from the left that if you arm uh, the, the, the law enforcement with good equipment that somehow they're going to turn on their community. Law enforcement is run by a local sheriff who is elected by the communities there because the community trusts them. And uh, if that sheriff is not doing a good job and is misusing that trust, He'll get voted out. If the local police force didn't have this gear, Juan, um, as they are responding to the devastation in Texas, what would it look like? It would look like the U.S., uh, you know, it, it would look like state troopers and, and you send in the military from the United States government with the same equipment. The problem here, and I think this is what would have the founding fathers pulling out there here, is that local police were never intended to be a military force. I mean, they were never intended to confront protesters or deal with problems with using overwhelming force that made us as citizens really their subjects. That's not but what Juan, this Juan, is about. Juan, those protests are getting out of control and police are having to stand down. Of course right. we want them equipped no, with the best but, equipment. But that's not, that's fine. I agree with you. I think they should be fully equipped, but they should be equipped as a police force, not given surplus from the U.S. military that was left over after Middle Eastern wars. It takes it you to know, another Juan, level. We live in an ever-changing world and these police forces were never contemplating the types of threats that they're facing today, whether it's domestic or international. And they've got to be equipped to handle those threats. And they've also got to be trained to handle those threats. That's something that's been missing in this conversation is they've got to have the funding to train local dedicated law enforcement so they know how to navigate and, and defend American citizens. Yeah. I don't think anybody is saying that we want to take money away. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's the militarization that is setting off alarms. And it's interesting to me because conservatives, especially after incidents like Ferguson, were the first to say they disagreed with a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff, but they were the first, the conservatives so one, were first to say, what's going on with our police looking like they are an author authoritarian force? Juan, those demonstrations are getting more out of control because we're militarizing the police? Come on, that's not why. They're, the, 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 the Antifa, the alt-left, the alt-right, they're getting more dangerous. They're doing that on their own. They're not responding to the police. You, you know, Rachel, I'm going I'm to let you wrap this up here. The job of the police is to protect the community, to protect the citizens. So shouldn't they just have the best gear with which they can do that? I think they should have the best gear. And um, I do think that th there is something to be said about some of the images of them looking like they're some sort of authoritarian force. Um, and we could, we could find the balance there and split the baby. Give them the right equipment, but maybe be careful about what equipment we give them that maybe gives off the wrong impression. All right. Thank you, everybody. And coming up, why someone here says a lot of people will have to eat their words about President Trump next week.